You're gonna need two things from Dollar Tree, this orange jar and some soap. You're gonna take out your soap container. You're gonna pull out the tube that's inside of the dispenser. Next, you're gonna need something sharp. I'm using some wire cutters that I have. I'm gonna poke a hole in the center of my jar and I'm gonna start pulling back the metal. This is pretty easy to do with these lids from Dollar Tree. You're gonna use your wire cutters to continue to pull the back of the lid until the top portion of the soap container fits in perfectly. Once you get it to fit in, just add some E6000 to hold it in place. Then you're gonna take your lid outside, spray it with two coats of a flat black spray paint. And I find that if I put it in a jar or a little plastic cup, it's a lot easier to spray paint. From there, fill it with your favorite soap, add the lid, and you have a perfect soap container to last you the fall season. All right, so this next DIY is a little bit out of the box, but when I was walking down the beauty aisle at Dollar Tree, I spotted this loofah, and I tell you guys, I thought this looks exactly like a pumpkin. So we're gonna make a pumpkin out of this loofah. So you're gonna cut off the handle, then you're gonna spray paint your loofah whatever color you want. I went with a brown color. You're gonna spray the bottom of it, let that dry, flip it over, and then spray the top. I really like the look of a natural handle on my pumpkin, so I found this stick that I had bought back in the spring from Five Below. It was a little long, so I used my hacksaw to cut it in half. I also had a leaf that I found from one of my florals, and I'm gonna hot glue the leaf in place, and then I will hot glue the stem and hold it till it's completely dry. This is a quick and easy pumpkin you can make, and I love the way it turned out. buy the dollars for one of these big cinnamon sticks. I have a great DIY for this. I'm really excited to create a high-end dupe for this broom that I saw at Pottery Barn. I picked up two to make this DIY a little bit fuller and more substantial. I'm gonna place the two brooms on top of each other and I'm gonna cut off any threads that are sticking out. Then I'm gonna grab some twine that I had in my stash. I'm gonna start wrapping the twine around where the existing twine was to hold them together. I'm gonna do this on all the areas where the broom previously had twine. This is going to help make my broom look seamless and you wouldn't be able to tell it was two brooms. Next, to give it that glow, I picked up some fairy lights from Dollar Tree. I picked up two packs. This was kind of trial and error. I started weaving the lights in and out at the bottom. Then as I went up, I decided to just start wrapping the lights around, kind of crisscrossing the lights as I went, making sure that the battery pack was going to be in the back where I was going to set it against the wall. I absolutely love how this broom turned out. It might be my new favorite fall DIY. When I got to Dollar Tree, I also found these adorable little acorns. So I ended up grabbing two of them. So I'm gonna paint the bases of them with that nomadic desert color. I wanted them to be very neutral, very matte. And of course, I couldn't get through a Dollar Tree video without using some nautical rope. So that's what we're gonna be using to wrap the top portion. So all you're gonna do is put some hot glue on the back and start wrapping around the nautical rope. If you can, add your glue to the back. That's just gonna make the whole final project look better. I'm gonna keep wrapping it until I've covered the entire piece all the way up to the little stem. Now again, these are great to put out with plants or books or other groupings that you have. So just put them out with your already existing decor. Here's 
you're gonna need a clear jar, a Dollar Tree glass container, and a knob. This knob I already had on hand from a project at Ikea. E6000 your knob to the top of your jar lid. Then you're gonna take your jar lid and your other glass container outside and spray it with two coats of black spray paint. Next, you're gonna flip your black jar upside down. You're gonna put some E6000 on the bottom and then put the clear jar on top. If you haven't guessed already, we're making a candy jar. So all you have to do from here is fill it with some of your favorite candy. You can put the black lid on top. This is perfect for the Halloween season. Oh, this is my owl, you guys. This is one of my most popular Dollar Tree DIYs on my channel. Super cute. Now I found these cute little owls when I was shopping at Dollar Tree. They're so adorable, had to pick them up. Here's a simple DIY that you can do to update them. So grab your favorite chalk paint. I'm using Waverly white chalk paint. I'm gonna paint two coats on the owl. Once it has a chance to dry, I'm gonna come back in with sandpaper and pull out all the detail. It really helps the owl stand out and it gives it a whole fresh new look. I'm going to be using two shades of my gold rub and buff. I find that when you combine two shades, it really gives the piece more dimension. So I'm gonna be mixing the two colors together, adding it on to my existing plastic. I did get a little bit on the glass. That's okay, you can wipe that up. This was a subtle change to this clock, but I love the way the finish turned out. I absolutely love the look of terracotta for fall. I think it looks so high end. So I found these ceramic pumpkins at Dollar Tree and I thought, let's try to make them look a little bit more high end. Make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. So mine sat completely overnight. I'm gonna mix water with my Waverly White chalk paint and use a foam brush to add that to the outside of my pumpkins. Then I'm gonna immediately wipe it off with a paper towel because I want it to just have a little bit of a white finish to it to distress it just a little bit. You can do this as much or as little as you like. After that, I let them completely dry and here's how they look styled. How adorable are these trays? I definitely think we could DIY with them. The largest one is 12, the smaller one is $10. Trays are one of my favorite items to update and DIY. You can really give them a high-end look. So with this tray, I'm gonna be adding some cane to the base of it. And at first I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to put it on there. So I cut a big piece and then I kind of just started to eyeball how I was going to put it in. And I tried a couple of methods. One method was just kind of cutting it. That wasn't working very well. Then I decided to kind of mark it where I wanted to cut it out and then cut out where I marked it. From there, I did also fold it in a bit so I could see where that fold line was and then I could cut that line off. Just keep working with it until you can get it to fit in your tray as evenly as possible. And then I'm going to use hot glue around the edges to hold it in place. Next up, I'm going to paint the base of it with ink by Waverly. I'm going to be using a foam brush and I'm going to have to dab it on there pretty thick just because I'm trying to get through two layers to cover it. I'm also going to add paint to the inner sides and if you get any paint on the top, that's okay. Just take a wet paper towel and immediately wipe it off. Let this dry and then you have a beautiful tray to sit out for the fall season. I saw these on a high-end site and I thought I could definitely recreate them. You're gonna need two jars. I'm using the orange ones. You're also going to need a black paint pen. I love any project where I can be creative. I started by drawing some ovals down vertically on my jars. Then I went back in and put hash marks all the way around. 
Let these jars sit out and dry. Now with my other jar, I decided to create some wavy lines. This was really fun to do, but you could do any design, any pattern that you want. For the lids, I'm gonna use two stems that I had from another pumpkin. I'm gonna hot glue those to my jars. I'm gonna spray paint the lids with two coats of a black spray paint. I'll just add the lids to my jar and here's how they turned out. I was so excited to find the acorn beads this year at Dollar Tree. They're gonna be such a popular item. I have a great DIY for them. I'm gonna be creating a garland with my acorn beads. So I need to start by drilling a hole into the bead. So I'm gonna use my drill and drill a hole. I'm gonna split my beads into two categories. With half of the beads, I'm going to dye them with a navy color. Then I'm going to put in half of my acorn beads, close the lid, and I'm gonna kind of shake them up. I let them sit in this container for about 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes was up, I put the acorns out on a plate so that they could dry completely. I didn't rinse them or do anything to them. I let them dry overnight came back the next day and now it's time to add them to my garland. So I'm gonna be using twine for this DIY. I tied it in a knot at the end of the twine and then I'm gonna place the beads onto my twine. So I used five dark beads and then switched to five natural beads. And then I went back and forth until I used up the majority of my beads. Once I got to the end, I tied those in a knot as well. These beads would work great for a fireplace or centerpiece. So when I was strolling through Dollar Tree, I came across these wood frames with wood beads. I almost lost my mind. I was so excited that Dollar Tree had these. So I picked up three of them and knew that I had to do a fall project with these. Now they just seemed really neutral. So I wanna kind of stick with that neutral tone. So I took the backs off of them. Then I was looking around Dollar Tree for some craft paper. I couldn't find it, but I did find this wrapping paper and on the back it was plain. So I just grabbed this and I'm going to trace around the craft paper, cut it out, and I'm going to hot glue it to the base of these frames. Next, I pulled out my Cricut Joy, which if you guys have been watching any of my videos, it's my favorite Cricut. I can easily create something on my phone and then print it on my Cricut Joy. So I went on my phone and I just grabbed three images of pumpkins. I measured the frames and determined I didn't want any of them to be longer than four inches. I resized all of the pumpkins to be around four inches. I sent them to my printer and cut them out on a white smart vinyl. Next, I'm just gonna pull those Cricut decals off and I'll place them onto the craft paper. Then I'll just simply put the backings of the frames back on. And you can see how cute these look in a grouping of three on my wall. I found these adorable name cards at Dollar Tree that are perfect for fall. I wanted to create them for my fall table. So all I did was I went into my Cricut design space, put in the names that I wanted to cut out, sent them to cut, and then the vinyl that I'm gonna be cutting on is Black Permanent Vinyl by HTV Rond. I'm gonna place that vinyl onto my mat, cut it out. 
Then I'm gonna weed it out. The cool thing about the HTV rock vinyl is it actually comes with transfer paper. So after I weed it out, I can put the transfer paper on top and then pull off the backing and place it onto my name cards. really wanted to set up a fall table. I'm gonna show you how you can do it super inexpensively. I like to start with the centerpiece. Find like a big statement item. These are some pumpkins I've had for years. They're from a store called Old Time Pottery if you're from Kansas City. I'm gonna put three in the middle of my table. Next, let's add a little bit of height. I love using these candle sticks. These are thrifted and you can add in some tapered candles. Inexpensive greenery, that's the key to really elevate any centerpiece. Hide your stems underneath your candles as well as your pumpkins. How cute are these fabric pumpkins? I'm gonna add these around. It's just gonna give a little bit more texture and detail. Liz, do you have an order to where you're placing the pumpkins or are you just placing these randomly? I don't want them to look like every other color. So you want it to look a little bit random, but another thing I like to do, like for instance here, there's kind of a hole in my greenery. So that kind of fills in that hole. So just kind of place them around until you think it looks good. Like I really don't feel like I need any more, so I'm not gonna add them. So don't feel like you have to add all the pumpkins. Now my place settings are gonna be so simple. I'm gonna use these Dollar Tree charger plates. I'm gonna use my Dollar Tree plates. It's gonna be really simple. Liz, what are you going to put on these cute little pumpkin trays? I thought these would be great to add just a cute little treat. So I have one that takes less than a minute to put together. What you're gonna need are some vanilla wafers, Hershey Kisses, chocolate chips, and a little bit of icing. So pick out a vanilla wafer, add some icing to the back of it. Then you're gonna add your Hershey's Kiss, flip it over, put a little bit more icing on the top, Add in your chocolate chip, then you have an adorable little acorn. Oh no, this is kind of broken. Do you guys remember this that I made lat two years ago? I think it's been two years. I think it has. This was a fun DIY. I'm gonna have to put that one back together. I grabbed one of these pumpkin wreath forms at Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some twine as well. So I started with my twine at the very top. I'm gonna hot glue it on, and then I'm just going to start wrapping it around the top portion to cover my stem. Next, I wanted to wrap the outer portion of my wreath, so I'm just going to wrap it around, hot gluing periodically. You're gonna need some beads for this. I suggest grabbing them on Amazon. I'll put the ones that I use down in the description box. So you're gonna use your wire cutters to cut the top of the wreath form, and you're gonna start lacing on your wood beads. Once you get it to the top, grab your hot glue and you're going to place it back exactly where it was before and let the glue dry before you move on. You're gonna repeat those steps on your wreath. I just love the way this pumpkin turned out. I hope you guys are able to recreate it. Last fall, one of my most popular projects was when I painted an owl and sanded it. So when I saw the fox this year, I said, hey, let's try the fox and see how that goes. So I went in with two coats of the white paint that I had picked up from Home Depot. And I do kind of regret picking that weight. I think it would have been better if I just used Waverly white paint because Waverly white paint's a little bit easier to sand.
once it has a chance to dry, you're gonna come back in with sandpaper and you're gonna pull off all the details so that you can see the details in the ears, the nose, the eyes, around the tail, and it just kind of makes a cute little figurine. So here's how the fox turned out. For this next project, you're gonna need two of the orange jars and some fairy lights. Let's start with the lids. So I'm gonna use some acrylic paint and paint the lids with two coats of a brown paint. Now I wanted these to look a little bit more rustic, so I just found a stick in my backyard and I'm gonna use my saw to cut down two little handles. Now for my leaves, I found these really cool fall florals at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut off a couple of the leaves, hot glue those down, then I'll hot glue my stick in place. And then to make it look a little bit more rustic and realistic, I'll add in some Spanish moss. I added batteries to my lights and I'm gonna place those into the jar, add the lids, and these look so cool lit up. What you're gonna need is three wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need something to hang them. I found these really awesome macrame hangers at Dollar Tree. You also need some fall paint. So go to Sherwin-Williams or Home Depot and pick out some fall colors that you love, that you wanna use in your crafts this year, and then get inexpensive paint samples. They're perfect to use in all your DIY crafts. Grab some wood filler and fill the holes on your wood cutouts. Next, you need to prep, because once you start down the road of paint pour, there's no turning back. Okay, that's a little dramatic, but you wanna get all your supplies out. So I'm gonna open the top of all of my paints, line them up. I'm also going to get out three disposable cups. You also wanna use gloves because this is gonna get messy. Next, I'm gonna pour my paint into the disposable cups. You just wanna pour a little bit in each cup. And remember, however much paint you put in there, that's gonna be the main color on your item. So if you like a color more than others, just pour them depending on which color you wanna see the most on your paint pour. Before you start pouring, make sure you get out a plate and a cup or something to sit on there that your paint pour can rest on. Then you're ready to start. So put your piece onto the cup and you're going to take the cup with all of the paint in it and you're just going to wiggle it on the top of whatever you're paint pouring. Once you get the majority of the paint on there, then this is the fun part. You can start moving it around to create those really fun lines and shapes that happen with a paint pour. You wanna make sure that you cover your wood piece completely with paint. Now repeat this with all of the pieces that you're going to paint for. From here, what you wanna do is you wanna let them sit on the cups to dry. This way, any excess paint will have a chance to just drop off and make sure you give it at least overnight to dry. I really hope you guys are able to find these macrame hangers at Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find them. I'm gonna use these to hang up my paint pour pieces. So I'm just going to flip the pieces over on the back and then I'll line up the macrame pieces. Once I have it where I want it to be, I'm gonna hot glue it on the bottom as well as the top. Once it has a chance to dry, I'm going to cut off the extra strands on the macrame, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on my other two paint pour pieces, making sure that I line them up as evenly as possible with the one I first created. My next tip is how are you going to hang these pieces on the wall? So what I like to do is put everything on the floor. This way I can kind of map it out where it's going to look good. Next, you gotta figure out how you're gonna hang it. I'm gonna be using these hooks from Dollar Tree. I'm actually gonna place these behind my macrame pieces on the yarn. Then you can just simply pull the backing off and place them on your wall. Yeah. 
Now the only item I'm not using from Dollar Tree is my bowl. Now this is a dough bowl. It's actually my mom's. I asked if I could borrow it and I told her I would give it back to her with fall decor in it. If you don't have a bowl like this, that's okay. You can use anything that you have on hand. For this project, you're gonna need some kind of foam piece or something that your sticks can go into. So I'm gonna use two foam pieces at the bottom. Next, I'm going to space out my pumpkin. Since I bought a lot of different colors, I bought about three of each of the colors and then I have more of the white. I'm gonna evenly space out the colors. As I was doing this, my foam pieces were kind of falling apart, so I hot glued them together. I just used some skewers to hold them together. Once I have all my color sticks in, then I'm going to sprinkle in the white ones. Next, I added in moss to cover up my foam pieces. And then to fill in the gaps around my pumpkins, I grabbed some leaves from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna place those in around and then I'm just gonna spread the leaves out so they're as full as possible. Another leaf I grabbed at Dollar Tree are these leather ones. These are completely new this year as well. So I'm going to add them in, hot glue them in place, just wherever I have holes or I think they might look nice. This is probably the most colorful centerpiece I put together. I think it looks awesome on my table. I've been seeing these wooden candle bowls everywhere. They're super cute, but they're very expensive. And I thought, you know what? I bet I could figure out how to make that for a fraction of the cost. So I went to the thrift store and I found this long wooden bowl. This was priced at $5.99, so a great deal. So the other items you're gonna need for this project is you're gonna need some tea lights. Now you don't need this many. You probably only need about eight for this project. You're also going to need some scented wax cubes. and the one one I got is the line dried linen scent. Now, if you have an old pot that works best, this is one that I've melted candle wax in before. I'm gonna melt four of the value packs. I'm gonna use eight tea light candles. So right now I'm just going to pop them out of their metal containers. So to do that, I'm just gonna push from the bottom. And then once you get it out a little bit, you can pull on the wick. Okay, so the wax is completely melted. So now I'm going to just lightly, oops, not as lightly, pour it into the bowl. I let the candle set up for about 15 minutes. Now it's still liquid, but it's a little bit more firm and it's not as warm. I'm gonna start by putting in my tea lights throughout the candle. Now that everything's in there and it's setting up, I'm going back through and just pulling the wicks up gently. I'm using my tweezers. Okay, so what's going on? How are we gonna fix the candle? <laughs> so when I was pouring the wax in, you guys, I got it along the edges here and like up here. So I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I fix this? So my first thought was, okay, what if I painted the wax along here and Delaney's like, mm -hmm. not, that's, I, that would make it worse. I think putting <laughs> wax on the edges would make it way worse. I would probably totally mess it up. Delaney said we could probably leave it the way it is, but I'm gonna try to add a little bit more wax really carefully around the edges to maybe fill up and meet this line. And hopefully that won't ruin what we've already done. So my tip whenever you guys are doing a candle like this is just be very, very careful when you're pouring the wax in so you don't have it splashing on the edges like I did. I'm gonna pour the extra wax into this disposable container so I have a little bit more control when I'm pouring. Okay, so I'm gonna let this set up. I feel like it's a little bit higher. We're not going to touch it until it's completely dry. <laughs> I let the candle sit for about an hour and I am super impressed with it. I think it looks great. It's not perfect, but I love it. I'm gonna light all of the wicks. Okay. 
I wanted to show you guys how to put together a scented fall garland. So for this, you're going to need some cinnamon sticks. You're also going to need a bag of oranges and some bay leaves. You're gonna set your oven to bake at 200 degrees. Then we're going to be putting the oranges in the oven. I'm gonna put my oranges on these cooling racks so I don't have to place them directly on my oven racks. And then I just put a baking sheet underneath to catch anything that might fall. I'm gonna slice the oranges so that they're about a fourth of an inch in thickness. And then I'll just place them on my cooling rack. And I'm gonna leave out the ends. they're ready to go. I'm going to put them in the oven now. You're going to keep them in the oven for four hours at 200 degrees. And then you just want to flip them every hour. While the oranges are in the oven, I'm going to work on the cinnamon sticks. All I'm going to do is simply drill a hole in the center of my cinnamon sticks. That way, when I put everything together on the twine, I can just easily string in my garland. Now, if you don't want to drill a hole, you could always tie it around the cinnamon stick as well. I'm gonna drill holes into 18 cinnamon sticks. So it's been one hour, so I'm just gonna go through and flip all of the oranges and then I'll put them back in for another hour. So I'll do that every hour until I get to the four hour mark. I'm gonna put them back in the oven. I just pulled my oranges out. They're dried and ready to go. So now I can assemble my garland. So I'm gonna pull off a long piece of twine. The longer the better because you don't wanna have to redo this. And I'm gonna cut that out. For this, I'm gonna use a large needle and I'm just gonna thread the twine through my needle. I like to double up whenever I'm doing thread or twine, so I'm just going to double up the twine and tie it at the end. Okay, so now for the fun part, I get to assemble my garlic. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You can really do it however you want. I think I'm gonna alternate between orange slices and my cinnamon sticks, and then every maybe, I don't know, five or six, I'm gonna add in a bay leaf. Because I have more oranges than I have cinnamon sticks, I'm gonna like double up my oranges a few times, maybe add in like a larger one and a smaller one. Again, there's no right or wrong way to put this together. I'm always looking for activities that I can do with my kids and this, you guys, smells so amazing. So it would be perfect to set out for fall. Okay, so once you get to the end, you don't have to do it tight or anything, just loosely put it how you want it, and then you can just tie it off at the end. You can hang it up, you could set it out on a kitchen tray, but a perfect garland for fall. For this next DIY, you're only gonna need two craft items, wood beads and some stems. So the wood beads I pick up are from Amazon. You can also get them at Dollar Tree, but I'm gonna start by hot gluing my wood beads together. So I'm gonna do four in a row, making sure that the holes are upright. And then I'm gonna do three more along the sides so that I have four on each side, and then I'll close it up to make a square so each of my sides has four beads. Next, I'm gonna start building up my beads because I'm creating a vase. So I'll just hot glue the beads on top of the ones that I previously put down and I'll also connect them together. 
this is really a fun project. You can make it as tall or as short as you want. I decided to go about five beads tall. Now my favorite stems from Dollar Tree are these. I feel like they look so natural and so much more expensive than Dollar Tree florals. I'm going to cut those off at the bottom and use those in my vase. And here's how it turned out. So this next one, you're gonna need a clear jar. You're also going to need some glass paint. I'll link to the one that I picked up down below, but this is a really fun paint to use. You can use any color you want. I'm gonna use the two blue colors. With the middle section, I'm gonna use a paintbrush and paint on some of the lighter color blue. Now, some of my tips I wanna give you is that glass paint dries really quickly. So you wanna make sure you get all of the brush strokes out as you're going around. Do not wait and come back because by the time you come back, you're not gonna be able to paint it. The other thing is because it does dry quickly, if you want the color to be more intense, just add in a second coat. So after I did the blue lighter paint, I did on the bottom a darker color of blue. And then I did a second coat on the entire jar. I wanted this to have an ombre look, so I'm going to leave the top part of the jar completely clear. Let this dry completely and I styled mine with some fall stems. I wanted to elevate this basket and create a planter, so I'm gonna do my combination of E6000 and hot glue on the top portion of this riser. You guys ask me sometimes why I use E6000 and hot glue. Well, the hot glue is going to be an instant bond, while the E6000, it's gonna take overnight to bond, but it's going to be a much stronger bond. It's going to help your piece hold together over time. I'm gonna place the basket in the center of my riser. You may need to add something into your basket so that your plant is the right height. I'm just putting this bowl in upside down. Next, you can put in any plant of your choice. I grabbed these pumpkins that have a removable lid. They're ceramic. They come in a white or an orange color. I grabbed the orange. It doesn't really matter which color you get. Just grab two of them. So I'm gonna start by putting some adhesive on the pumpkins to attach them together. Now you can use any adhesive you like, something that's real construction grade, like E6000 or some kind of construction adhesive. I will link below the kind I'm using as well as any product I use in the video plus what I'm wearing. Anything you need to know will be down in the description box. So when I was putting the pumpkins together, I actually realized that I should put them to where the tops were together. They just laid a lot nicer, so I had to move it around and re-glue it. Now let that dry for several hours. So I really wanted to nail down my color scheme this year for fall. So what I did was I went to Sherwin-Williams and I picked out six different paint colors that were in the colors I was wanting to use for fall. To cut down on my cost of paint, I then purchased samples. Well, I guess Sherwin-Williams doesn't have samples right now, so I ended up having to go to Home Depot and I got all of these paints because you can take paint swatches from any company to any different store. I picked up samples of each of my paint colors. I think they were around $8 each and I got them in a flat finish. So these are the colors that I'm gonna be using throughout the whole season. To paint my pumpkins, I'm gonna be using this subdued color and I'm going to do two coats on all of the pumpkins. Once that dries, I'll use my construction adhesive glue to add on a white plate to the top. Now, if you haven't guessed yet, I'm making a fun centerpiece cake plate to put out in my kitchen. Once everything dries, just fill it with your favorite treats, and I love having this out on my kitchen table.
Did you know Dollar Tree sells t-shirts? Like that's crazy, $1.25 for a t-shirt. I picked up an inexpensive one and I'm gonna show you how to make a really cute shirt for fall. I'm also gonna purchase an SVG file off of Etsy. I'm gonna take the SVG file, upload it into my Cricut design space. I'll size it to the right size that I want so it's you know pretty large on my t-shirt. Then I'm gonna send it to cut. You also, when you're doing words, wanna make sure you do a mirror image. That way when you put the vinyl on, it's going to be the right side. Now I picked out two two heat transfer vinyl colors to use that were cute fall colors. Now when you're doing a heat transfer, you want to make sure that you put it on the back side so you're cutting the back side of the vinyl. After I cut the vinyl, I'm going to weed it out. Then I'm gonna take my t-shirt, put it on to my auto heat press. I'm gonna start by lining up my words. Now I don't really measure this, I just kind of put it where I think it's going to look good. I put a cover over it, slide it into the heat press. It's going to be at 305 degrees for 20 seconds. And because it has the auto feature when it's done heating it up for 20 seconds, it's going to automatically raise it up. I'm gonna check and make sure that it's completely stuck down and if it's not, just put it in for another 20 seconds. Next, I'm gonna add in some of the leaves and star embellishments and heat press those as well. How adorable is this shirt and it cost me under $5. So Dollar Tree sells these foam pumpkins. They come in white and orange. The one I had was orange, and last year I painted it more of this cream color, but we're gonna be doing something completely different with it this year. So I'm gonna take the stem off the top. Next, I grabbed some yarn. Dollar Tree sells yarn as well. I'm gonna start with this kind of burgundy color yarn. I'm gonna hot glue my yarn doubled over to the back. And then I'm gonna simply just start wrapping it around my pumpkin. When I get to the end of my yarn, I will hot glue it to the back and then I'm gonna keep doing this until I cover my entire pumpkin with yarn. Now I needed to figure out a stem for this pumpkin. So I had an older pumpkin that I wasn't using, so I pulled the stem off of that. You could also get a stick outside. Dollar Tree sells some of like those small sticks. You could use that as well. And I'm just gonna hot glue that to the top. Now it was looking a little unfinished, so I grabbed a leaf from one of my Dollar Tree stems and I'll hot glue that on there as well. And here's a look at my yarn pumpkin. I've really been into purchasing real eucalyptus lately, and my favorite place to grab it is at Trader Joe's. I love eucalyptus because it lasts so long, and whenever it dries out, it still looks really nice. Well, one of the things I've been seeing lately in high-end stores are colorful eucalyptus. So I wanted to show you how you could create the same look for less. So I grabbed the eucalyptus that had been in my home for probably two to three weeks, and I took it outside. I also grabbed like a a little bit lighter than a navy color spray paint and I'm gonna spray one side of the eucalyptus and then I'm gonna flip it around now when you spray it you want to spray from the top so that it looks like the paint is coming down from the top if that makes sense and I'll just flip it over maybe two or three times and continue to add spray paint and here's a look at how I displayed it in my home
Last time I was at Dollar General, I picked up this beaded wreath. Let's DIY it. I think the best new item out at Dollar General is this beaded wreath. It is so gorgeous for $10. I so hope that you guys can find it. Now, I really loved it just the way it was, so I just wanted to add a simple bow. You can use any ribbon. This ribbon is a fall ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to tie a tight knot. Then I'm gonna create a loop and tie a bow, pulling it so it's nice and fluffy. And the thing with bows is you just wanna keep working with it and adjusting it until you get that desired look that you want. Then I will cut the tails off at an angle, trying to make them as even as possible. I'm gonna hot glue the tails in place so it doesn't go anywhere. And this is a great item to hang anywhere in your home. You're gonna need a clear container and some twine. Start by cutting long pieces of your twine. You're gonna take two pieces of twine, hot glue them right underneath the lip of your jar. You're gonna do this all the way around your jar. Once you get that done, you're going to take two pieces, clamp them together and hot glue them in place so you create kind of like a triangle. You're gonna repeat this step two times down on your jar. Once you get all of the twine to the bottom of your jar, you're going to pull two pieces together, cut it off in the center, and hot glue it in place. Repeat that all the way around. Next, wrap the top half of your jar with twine. and you can fill it with some of your favorite florals. I think this one looks really high end. So if you guys have been eyeing this wall art that I have over here, I'm gonna show you how to make that next. So I started by grabbing three white jars that I had. You can thrift these, you can use ones you already have. I used a pitcher and also like two little jars. So you probably already have something like this on hand. Next, you're going to need some sort of macrame cord. I will link to the one that I love down in the description box. It works awesome. So just go click the link down below and it'll take you straight to the one I use. So to create a macrame for each one of my pieces, I'm going to pull off six long pieces of macrame. Once you have your six strands, you're gonna start by tying a knot at the base. Then you can place that big knot on the bottom of your jar, and then you're gonna go around the edge and take two of the strands from two of the knots and tie those together, creating three more knots. And you'll repeat this again. You're gonna take two of the strands, tie them together, creating another knot. Now this should allow you enough knots to hold your vase in place. If you have a smaller container, you may not have to do it as far up. I know I usually try to tie the knots until I get to the top of the container. Next, I'm just going to gather those pieces together and then I will hang it on a stick that I cut down from my backyard. You can use any stick, anything you have. If you don't wanna use a stick, you could use like a one by two board. This is literally a stick from my backyard and I'm gonna tie it to that stick. Now I'll repeat those steps, putting the macrame together for all three of my containers and I'll add those to my stick. You also kind of want to step back, so I kind of tied them loosely and figured out where I wanted the placement until I tied them really secure, so if I needed to move something. Next, I'll just trim off any excess pieces on the knot. I'm gonna start by adding in some neutral florals, but if you wanted to add in fall colors or blues and greens or any colors you love, you could totally do that. 
Dollar Tree also has these really fun pumpkins on a wood stick. I'm gonna place those in there as well. If any of them are too long, just trim the stick down to where you need it to be. You guys, I love the way this turned out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this, but this is probably my favorite project in this video. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make this adorable pumpkin garland. I found these pumpkin pom-poms in the fall section at Walmart. They come in a bunch of colors. I went with the yellows and oranges. I also picked up some black pipe cleaners and that's what you're going to use first. So take your pipe cleaner and you're gonna fold it in half. Next, you're gonna make a one inch loop where your pipe cleaner is folded. Then you're going to twist the loop and hot glue it to the base of the stem. Then you're going to wrap around the excess pieces about two times. Then to curl them on the edges, I just grabbed a dowel rod and I'm gonna twist that on either side. And that's how you create a stem for your pumpkin that's gonna work for your garland. Repeat this step for all of your pom-poms. To attach them, you're going to need a long piece of twine. I'm also going to be using the fishing line that I was using earlier. So cut off a piece of fishing line. You're gonna loop it through that black stem loop that you created earlier, and then you're going to tie that tightly to your twine. Now you wanna make sure that your pom-poms are evenly spaced. So grab any object you had. I have this foam brush. I'm gonna set that in between my pumpkins, and then I'll attach my next pumpkin on using that foam brush as my spacer and I'll repeat that until I have all my pumpkins added. These are great to hang up on your fireplace. You can also put them on a door, they're super festive. You guys know we couldn't get through this video without recreating a high-end find. And the find were these candles that I found off a of crate and barrel. And I love this ombre look to them with the wood underneath. So I went to my thrift store trying to find something similar to this wood piece because I knew Dollar Tree wasn't going to have like a wood candle. I found these really inexpensive little wood candles. Honestly, you could grab any wood item from Dollar Tree and I'll show you how to get this ombre look. So I started by placing tape around the center portion of each of my candles. I wanted them to be opposite of each other. So I wanted the paint to be on the top half of one and the paint to be on the bottom half of the other. Now to get the majority of my paint on there, I needed to tape off one whole section of each of the candles. So I grabbed some craft paper and taped that around so that when I sprayed, that section would not get any paint on it. And then I took the candles outside and did two coats of spray paint on each of them. Next, I'm going to remove the tape once everything has dried. To get the ombre look, I honestly just held the candle holder in my hand and then I sprayed lightly along the edge and that gave me that gradient look. You really don't have to add a lot of paint here. Honestly, less is more and it doesn't take much and then you have that ombre effect. And here's how they look styled together in my office. basket this is cute so I made this into a little hanging sign I love this basket it was thrifted I definitely think I could update this so let's try to do something with this basket okay so I removed the old sign that I had used previously 
So I gathered some yarn that I felt like represented fall really well and some of the colors that I was drawn to and I just cut them down into long pieces. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start in about the middle and hot glue three or four pieces to one side. I'm gonna wrap them around the side and then I'll just continue to hot glue. I'll come in with the green color next. And then go on to my brown color. I thought this basket would be really cute to add in some florals and make a wall arrangement. These stems I picked up last year from Dollar Tree, but they have a ton of different variety to choose from for the fall. With the stems, I put them a little off center so you were able to see the basket behind them. 